Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast, wild, crazy world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea and digestive ailments and autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human body is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is a renewing system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself. On a moment to moment basis, it needs raw materials to do its work, but other than the raw materials, it does it on its own, folks. And while it may seem like a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're dealing with a degenerative disease crisis, an autoimmune disease, if you have a health problem of any kind, let us help you. Let us help you get off your meds. Let us help you reverse, renew, help your body renew, whatever your health challenge is. 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Let us help your body heal and renew from whatever your health challenge is. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart. You can also sign up for uh, you, to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, or my new blog, criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, we'll get your calls here in the bottom of the hour. We're talking skin and skin health. I'm talking specifically, at least the last couple of days, we've been talking about dry skin. Dry skin is an epidemic. It's universal. Most adults have at least some degree of dry skin. It's certainly not a life-threatening problem, but it is a sign. It is a signal. It is a symptom of something breaking down in the body. And like all diseases, cell disease, dry skin is also a cell issue. All diseases, cell disease, skin health issues are no different. In the case of dry skin, you've got a disorder of your skin cells, a disorder of your moisturizer cells. Those are called sebum cells. Between disorders of the skin cells, technically they're called keratin oocytes, keratin cells, and a breakdown in skin moisturizer cells or sebum cells, you end up with dry skin. Skin cells, keratin cells, sebum cells, they need everything that your bone cells need and your muscle cells need and your heart cells and your brain cells and your liver cells and your bone cells and every other cell in the body. They all need the same things and they all need the same things in the right measure and the right proportion. They need nutrients, vitamins, your mighty 90 essential nutrients, vitamins and minerals and accessory nutrients and essential fats and amino acids. They need oxygen. And they need detoxification. They need a clean place to do their work. That's it, folks. If you have dry skin, you got a nutrient problem, an oxygen problem, as well as an inflammatory problem or a, de- or a toxification problem. In the case of skin cells, skin cells are constantly dividing. They're constantly growing. They grow faster than any other cell system in the body. And they're sloughed off into the environment over time. So, and this is where distinctions come in. Yesterday we talked, or the day before, we talked about how important it is to make distinctions in the body. When we look at the skin, it just looks like an inert covering. It doesn't really look like much is happening, but if you zoom in with your x-ray vision or your microscopic nano vision, you'll see layers. And these layers of the skin, or understanding these layers of the skin, is very instructive if you're going to take care of your dry skin. And dry skin is based on a combination of a broken down surface layer or barrier layer, in a, uh, as well as a uh, broken down sebum or oil making cells, as well as water trapping cells or water trapping tissue underneath. Putting a moisturizer cream on is not only not going to help your dry skin, but its chances are pretty darn good it's going to make matters worse. And this is why people get addicted 
to their moisturizing cream or moisturizing lotion. This whole process of skin cell growth and movement is very complicated, it's very regulated, and it's very tightly controlled. Thank God we don't have to think about how our, about making or helping our skin cells grow, or about making or helping our skin cells divide, or about making or helping our skin cells rise to the top. They do it on their own under healthy conditions. Control and regulation and stabilization of this movement of cells upwards from the bottom layers of the skin to the top requires oxygen, it requires detoxification, and requires nutrition. Under conditions of starvation, suffocation, and toxification, these are the only three things you need to know about if you're dealing with any kind of health challenge. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. You don't have to worry about the pH, and you don't have to worry about uh, mechanical uh, strategies, and you don't have to worry about drugs, and you don't have to worry about dermatologists as long as you take care of your mighty 90 essential nutrients, oxygenation, and detoxification. If you're wondering how drugs fit into the equation at all, they fit into the equation by being toxic. And if, you wanna, if you're interested in, in maximizing or optimizing detoxification, the last thing you ever want to do is get a prescription drug from your doctor. The last thing a medical professional should ever do is give you a prescription drug if he's really interested in health and wellness and healing. That's, the, that's my problem with the entire medical model and its representatives. Under conditions of nutritional deficiency, suffocation, toxification, inflammation, and when I say suffocation, I'm really referring to inflammation, as well as poor respiratory techniques, poor breathing strategies. You're not gonna, your skin cells are not gonna grow correctly, the skin barrier will not form correctly, sebum and oil making cells are not gonna grow correctly, moisture factors are not gonna be produced correctly, and guess what? You're gonna have rough, dry skin. And there's not a single moisturizer on planet Earth that can make a difference, except for maybe superficially. If you're African American, you may say your skin is ashy. Or you may have a condition called keratosis pylorus. That's called chicken skin. When African Americans say that their skin is ashy, what they're really referring to is dead skin cells are piling up on the surface. Keratosis pylorus, or chicken skin, is, is uh, the manifestation or the result of bumps on the surface of the skin, again, caused by cells not dividing correctly. Or you might have eczema. Eczema is a condition where you end up with these significant patches of poorly developed or completely undeveloped skin barriers, skin barrier. At the core of all these disease states and all these health breakdowns, dry skin, ashy skin, keratosis pylorus or chicken skin, eczema, at the core of all of these things, of all these health issues, you're going to find sick, starved, and toxic skin cells, keratinocytes they're called, keratin-making cells, keratinocytes. And by the way, you don't have to have a full-blown disease state either. Something as simple as dry skin can be associated with nutritional deficiencies and inflammation and toxification. As skin cells are rising from the lower layers to the top, rising from the bottom to the top, they're shape-shifting, they're morphing. And as they're shape-shifting and as they're morphing, this is so cool, this is where moisturization comes from, as they're shape-shifting and morphing, they're dumping their contents overboard. Imagine this. You've got cells at the bottom of the uh, bottom layers of the skin. And when you think of a cell, just think of a little animal, tiny microscopic animal that's doing everything an animal does. It eats and it, it, it excretes and it breathes and it builds and it grows and it reproduces and it divides, etc. As these skin cells are doing their work, they're changing shapes. And as they're changing shape, they're dumping their contents overboard into the stuff. Remember, it's all cells and stuff. As cells are moving upwards, they're dumping their contents into the stuff. And you know what, the, you know what happens to that con those contents that are being dumped overboard? They become moisture factors. How cool is that? As a cell is rising from the lower layers of the skin to the upper layers, to the barrier, it's changing shape, and it's dumping its contents overboard, and its contents become moisture factors. This is how the skin, or one of the main ways that the skin moisturizes itself. As the cells grow and divide, they dump their contents overboard. Those contents become moisture factors, and the skin becomes moisturized. The skin becomes soft. The skin becomes hydrated. The ultimate goal of a skin cell, as it's rising upwards to the top and dumping its contents overboard, is to become a surface cell, a surface barrier. So you've got two mechanisms at place here. As the cell's rising to the top, it's dumping its contents overboard. Those contents become moisture factors. The cell continues on its journey upwards until it, rise, until it uh, ends up on the top of the skin and it becomes a barrier. 
What I'm saying here, you guys, is the movement of cells has to occur, skin cells has to occur correctly if our skin is going to be moist. If the movement is not occurring correctly, the skin will be dry. That's the cause of dry skin. Cells not moving correctly, or at least partially the cause. On the bright side, got lines open for you at 866, uh, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. We'll get your calls here in the bottom of the hour at 844-236-6010 if you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, or the longevity products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to... Uh, contribute to our conversation on skin care and skin health. We're talking dry skin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dry skin is a movement problem. It's a cell movement problem. Cells not rising upwards from the bottom layers of the skin to the top layers of the skin. Got to zoom into the skin to really see what's happening. And what you'll see is layers and you'll see cells rising from the bottom to the top, shape shifting, morphing as they rise from the bottom to the top. And this morphing is really what's behind keeping your skin soft and hydrated and moist. There's three mechanisms for skin moisturization. The first is as cells are rising from the bottom to the top, they're dumping their contents overboard. Those contents become sponges, molecular sponges or moisture factors. As cells are rising from the bottom to the top, ultimately they become a barrier or a surface on the cell, on the surface of the skin. And, and this barrier surface keeps moisture in. That's the second mechanism. And then interspersed with the cells and the surface, you have sebum or skin oils, which act to trap water, which further act to trap water. And those are the three mechanisms, healthy mechanisms, normal mechanisms, natural mechanisms that the skin uses to keep itself moist. If you rub a moisturizing cream on the surface of the skin, all three of these functions are going to be operating at less than optimal uh, levels. You're going to be slowing down the movement of cells. That means you're going to have less contents being dumped overboard. You're going to be, have less of a surface on the skin, less barrier on the skin. And your sebaceous secretions, your sebum secretions, your natural skin oils will also be produced at a, at a reduced rate. So moisturizers are anti-moisturizers. This is why people get addicted to their moisturizing cream and it represents a humongous, humongous scam. Now, I'm not saying that your skincare companies necessarily know, although I'm pretty sure they do, that people get addicted to their moisturizing lotions. That is, the more they use, the more they need, the more they buy, the more they have to use. But the fact of the matter is, from a chemistry perspective, from a scientific perspective, from a health perspective, the last thing you ever want to put on dry skin is a moisturizer. How's that for heresy? And I've been doing this for a long time, folks. This is why people get addicted to their Blistex and why people get addicted to their ChapStick. Likewise, you have moisture, moisture factors in your lips, and the more ChapStick you use, the more you're going to end up needing. Any health care or skincare professional that recommends a moisturizer needs to go back to biochemistry or needs to take biochemistry 101, whether that's a dermatologist or an esthetician or a, 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 friendly, a friendly neighbor who recommends the latest and greatest moisturizing product. If it's a skincare company profiting, off of our misery, that's even worse. Three mechanisms that the skin uses to moisturize itself. Number one, as cells rise to the top, they're dumping their contents overboard. Those contents become moisture factors. Number two, as cells rise from the bottom to the top, they ultimately become a barrier on the surface that traps water. And number three, sebaceous or oil secretions, sebum secretions from cells that are called sebum cells or sebocytes produce uh, uh, or types of oils that act to trap water. That's how your skin stays moist. All of this is just part of normal health. So if our skin's dry, we're not, or our bodies are not normally healthy. One of the most fascinating of these cellular extrusions, these cellular components that gets pumped out of cells as they're moving upwards from the bottom to the top is something called hyaluronic acid. I absolutely love this stuff. We're going to spend a day or two talking about hyaluronic acid, but for, before I get into it, I just want to tell you right off, right from the top, you can't get the benefits of hyaluronic acid, the growth benefits, the anti-cancer benefits, the detoxification benefits, the, uh, the moisturizing benefits, the health benefits of hyaluronic acid by rubbing it on the surface of the skin. That ain't going to happen. What you will get if you rub hyaluronic acid on the surface of the skin is a little bit of water trapping on the surface. And you might get some, some temporary relief from your dry skin, but you're not going to create health changes in the skin by rubbing hyaluronic acid on the surface. And I hear, when I'm, when I'm doing my skincare presentations or doing talks or even on the radio, 
invariably somebody will want to know about high hyaluronic acid in skincare products. It doesn't do much. That's the answer. If you want to know about high, al high aluronic acid in a skincare product, it's expensive and it doesn't do much because its effects are underneath the surface of the skin. The effects for uh, the beneficial effects of hyaluronic acid, with the exception of some water trapping on the surface, the, the, the pro growth benefits, the anti cancer benefits, the healing benefits, the true moisturization benefits, these are all, uh, and the filling and shock absorbing benefits, the thickening benefits, all of these occur underneath the barrier, and they will, the hyaluronic acid cannot penetrate through the surface of the skin, through a healthy skin barrier. Hyaluronic acid is found everywhere in the body. It's found in every layer of the skin. It's produced by skin cells. It's a water trapping molecule. It's an important regulator for the movement of skin cells. And remember, that movement of skin cells is tightly, tightly controlled. And hyaluronic acid is part of that control system. And hyaluronic acid keeps cells dividing at just the right pace. It's one of the most ubiquitous molecules in the body. It's found in the eyes. It's found in the joints. It's found in the digestive tract. And it's found in the skin. We're always talking here on the bright side about cells and stuff. This is the primal distinction in the body, cells and stuff. And it's a distinction that we've got to make if we're going to stay healthy and get healthy because all disease is cell disease. I didn't say all disease is stuff disease. I said all disease is cell disease. Where does your doctor work? On the stuff. Where do your drugs work? On the stuff. Where do your skincare products work? On, for the most part, unless you're using true skincare products, that is, on the stuff. Where do your surgeries work? On the stuff. Nobody's addressing the cell. Why? Because medicine can't, uh, is not allowed entry into the cell. All medicine can do is poison the cell or cut it out or, or, or in some fashion uh, harm the cell. It can't heal a cell. Hyaluronic acid is quintessential stuff that comes out of cells. From a chemical perspective, hyaluronic acid is a long chain. Remember, chemistry is all about tinker toys. If you looked at a chemical, uh, chemical molecule or, a, or a, a piece of chemistry in the body, a biochemical in the body, and you looked at it with microscopic vision, you basically see a tinker toy with little chunks and little pieces. That's what you want to think of when you think of chemistry. Think tinker toys. Hyaluronic acid is a tinker toy-like chemical structure with a lot of spaces in it. It's like a tinker toy structure that's made up of cages or boxes. It's like a long chain of boxes. And these boxes represent openings for pieces of water, i.e. water molecules. So hyaluronic acid is a long chain tinker toy molecule made up of lots, lots of little microscopic boxes. And each one of these little microscopic boxes can hold a little molecule of water. That's what I mean when I say water trapping. A water trapping molecule is basically a bunch of boxes. And each one of these boxes holds a little piece of water. This is what gives hyaluronic acid its stupendously important qualities. Lots of ways the interaction between water, water molecules in the, in the hyaluronic acid in boxes, hyaluronic acid boxes, impacts health. So you have a long tinker toy-like molecule, long tinker toy-like chain, and this long tinker toy-like chain is made up of a bunch of little tiny boxes, and each one of these little boxes holds a water molecule. Thus, hyaluronic acid acts to trap water, and this trapping water gives, this water trapping property gives HA, hyaluronic acid, amazing, stupendously amazing uh, biochemical properties. And it's why, I, to, it's one of, if not my favorite molecule in the body because of these tremendous, very fascinating chemical qualities that the interaction between water and the hyaluronic acid have. For one thing, it makes it super electrical. We'll continue talking about HA. And We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also order all the longevity products off of brightsideben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844 Two three six sixty ten. Our number today and every day on the bright side eight four four two three six sixty ten. If you've got questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing success stories, and I know they're out there because I hear them all the time. Please be generous with your success stories. You can help change lives by sharing 
what's happened to you with a good nutritional supplement program, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We're talking hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is technically called a GAG, glucose aminoglycan. I just call it HA, hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is found wherever in the body, wherever the body needs to trap water. The body's 70% water. How does that even work? How can we be 70% water? We should just be a puddle sloshing around. Well, we're held together by molecules that hold on to that water, trap the water, bind the water. Your eyeballs, for example, largely made up of water, probably more than 70% water. How come your eyeballs have a solid structure even though they're 70% water? Well, hyaluronic acid traps the water in your eyeballs. In fact, a large part, uh, probably the most uh, HA-rich organ in the body is your eyeballs. Your joints are also very water-rich, and likewise, your joints contain large amounts of hyaluronic acid, and your skin is very moisture-rich. 70% water. You know, if, 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 even, if, if your skin water content drops even 1% or 2%, you're going to feel dry and uncomfortable. Just a small water loss. The skin is not supposed to lose water. The eyeballs are not supposed to lose water. The joints aren't supposed to lose water. And hyaluronic acid is one of the ways the body assures that that water won't get lost. Man, hyaluronic acid is so stupendously important. You can dose yourself with HA with hyaluronic acid. That's one of the best ways to upregulate HA content in the body. The glucogel caps from Longevity can also help with the production of hyaluronic acid. The glucogel caps are made up of glucosamine, which is a component of the hyaluronic acid molecule. And eating your bone soup, your cartilage-containing foods, is another great way to upregulate hyaluronic acid. Don't fall for hyaluronic acid in skincare products. Don't fall for that ruse. Hyaluronic acid doesn't do anything for your skin, really, although it will coat the surface and maybe trap a little water in the surface, create a little more comfort dry skin being so uncomfortable, you might be able to create a little sense of comfort on the surface of the skin, but you certainly aren't going to change the quality or texture of your skin in a permanent way by using hyaluronic acid on the top. Taking it orally, now that's different. Or you can inject hyaluronic acid. Dermatologists these days will inject a product into your skin called Juvederm. Juvederm is hyaluronic acid that fills out fine lines and wrinkles. It's a way of beefing up the stuff when you're not making enough stuff. Remember, it's cells and stuff in the skin. If you're not making enough stuff, dermatologists will actually inject stuff in your skin. If you think that's a good idea, go to your dermatologist asking for Juvederm. Personally, I think it's a lot better idea to use your glucogel caps to make sure you're using your bone soup and to make sure that your skin cells are healthy. So many ways to keep your skin healthy that have nothing to do with a dermatologist, have nothing to do with your standard moisturizing cream products. If you really want topical products, use topical vitamin C, which can support hyaluronic acid production, and use topical vitamin A. In fact, retinoic acid and retinol, topical vitamin A, are great ways to actually stimulate the production of hyaluronic acid, your own natural hyaluronic acid, I'm telling you. Vitamin A and vitamin C are the two go-to skincare ingredients. And if you're using skincare products that don't feature high concentrations of fatty, fat-soluble vitamin C, as well as retinol, or if you want to go the prescription route, retinoic acid, you're truly missing the boat in skincare. Are they more expensive? Probably, because fat-soluble vitamin C is one of the more expensive skincare ingredients you could use. Retinol, likewise, is one of the more expensive skincare ingredients you could use. But why would you waste your money with cheaper ingredients that aren't going to do anything? Even worse, why would you waste your money with cheaper ingredients that will suppress skin health chemistry, as most skincare ingredients do? Waxes and oils suppress skincare chemistry. Anything that occludes, that's the fancy way of saying covering up the skin surface, will suppress skin health chemistry. Not a good idea, especially if you're already dealing with dry skin or wrinkles or any other skin health issue. Go retinol. Go uh, lipophilic or fatty vitamin C. You can find out all about those two particular ingredients in my Truth Skin Health Products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's uh, take our first phone call of the day. Tanya in California, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, hi, this is Tanya. Can you hear me? Yes, Tanya, what's up? Hi, yeah, I have a couple um, products that I would like to get your opinion on. Sure. Can, you, can I get you to speak just a little bit louder? Sorry about that. How oh, yeah, there we go. What's going on, Tanya? Okay. 
And um, I, I think I have a ringworm. I wanted to know what would be the protocol for that. I prefer not to use or, um, not to use um, um, chemicals or something from the doctor. And I would like your opinion on that. Well, and then two items I would like um, your opinion on is this one product called the Vince Soap. If you've heard of it. And uh, can you? Uh, Willard, can, I hate to say this, Tanya, but I need you to back off from the phone just a little tiny okay. bit. Okay. Now, what? Okay. Now, have I heard of what product? The Sand Soap and Willard Water. Willard Water, I've heard of, but I can't understand what you're saying, the first thing you're saying. Defense is a soap. It's called Defense Soap. That's Can you the name of it. Oh, Defense Soap? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, defense. that's the name of it. I haven't heard. Is that a, that's the brand name, Defense Soap? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'd have to see. I'd have to see. I'd have to know what the active ingredient in Defense Soap is. Actually, I'm looking at it right here. Defense Soap. You're trying to get rid of your ringworm. I take it, right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about. Well, let's talk about ringworm first. For, are you sure it's ringworm? Do you know that for a fact? No. Or are you just assuming? No. Does it? Is it like I'm an itchy sure. rash? Yes. Okay. So what other what other health things do you have? You got to have something else else going on. Ringworm just doesn't show up spontaneously. What, what any digestive issues, diabetes, anything like that? Yes. Okay. That's what we're talking. That's really where you want to work. How old are you approximately? You don't have to tell me exactly. 48. Okay, 48. Okay, now tell me about some other health stuff that's going on. Do you have a history of digestive issues? That's always the first thing to think about when you yeah. have a skin problem. Okay, now you're talking. You're not going to be able to, once you have a, a skin a ringworm or any kind of skin rash or uh, mm-hmm. some kind of skin bacteria or fungus, you can kill it topically, but that's not really the most effective strategy. What you really want to look at is what's percolating inside the body. uh, that's uh, causing your defenses, your immune system, your skin immune system to break down, and that usually means a digestive problem. So get yourself on the probiotics, first of all, the the, uh, bioluminightly essence. That's always the first thing to do when you have a skin problem, especially if you have an associated, uh, when you have an associated digestive issue. The first thing you want to think about is good bacteria in the gut. There is a major, major, major relationship between good bacteria in the gut and fungal infections and and all kinds of skin, skin problems, including fungal infections. Eczema, psoriasis, dry skin, major connection between the digestive system and the skin for all of those issues. So buy Illuminite the Essence, three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night. Do a food diary. That's where you write down everything you eat and then how you feel from a digestive system perspective, diarrhea, constipation, loose stools, gas, bloating, etc. cetera, uh, how you feel after you eat that certain fo- after you eat those foods. When you notice problems between a relationship between foods and specific problems, you're going to want to eliminate those foods. That's the second thing. Probiotics food diary and food elimination. Hang tight. A few more things I want to tell you, Tanya. Don't go away, okay? And then we'll also talk about defense soap. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Talking to Tanya in California about ringworm. Tanya, you there? Tanya, Tanya. Do we have Tanya still? Yes. Hey, Tanya. Okay, that's okay. So a couple things. Uh, Ringworm, you want to think digestive health issues. All fungal infections, ringworm is a fungal infection uh, on the skin. All fungal infections, all infections uh, in pitigo and other bacterial infections as well as eczema and psoriasis. You want to focus on the digestive system. Digestive system equals skin when it comes to skin health issues. That's so, so important. Digestive system equals skin. That's probiotics, the good bacteria. Uh, the uh, bioluminightly essence, three in the morning, three at night. You uh, also probably would be wise to use fermented foods. Make sure you get some good bacteria in there and also fiber, which can feed the good bacteria. I like making my own fiber every morning with flax seeds, but you can use vegetable fiber also. Uh, with, make yourself vegetable juices. Then uh, anything uh, that's impairing digestive health in terms of food allergies or food intolerances, you need to eliminate those kinds of foods. That's where your food diary comes in. If you have a history of digestive problems, then that's great because then you'll know. uh, Then you'll be able to, it'll be much easier for you to link problem foods to to specific health, uh, digestive health issues. Uh, If you don't know you have a digestive problem, you've got to look for those. So that's the second step. Third thing you might want to do is uh, get yourself on the Z radical or the Fucoid Z, which can help strengthen and support the health of the digestive system. Uh, Also, glucogel caps can have a a positive effect, as we were saying earlier, on digestive health and also on skin health for that matter, too. Now, you asked about defense soap. I did a little research during the break. Defense soap is basically just bar soap with uh, tea tree oil in it. 
uh, tea tree oil and also uh, eucalyptus oil. They also put some homeopathic medication in there. I don't know that that's going to make too much of a difference. But if you really want to use tea tree oil, and tea tree oil does have some medicinal properties, save your money on the defense soap and, and just use straight tea tree oil and straight eucalyptus oil. I don't know if the eucalyptus oil is going to have much of an effect. Tea tree oil does have some... Uh, some antimicrobial activity, so uh, you might want to try some tea tree oil. But again, you don't have a, a, a topical problem. You've got an internal problem that's showing up topically. So it may, the, the tea tree oil, which is technically called melaleuca oil, uh, the tea tree oil, tea tree oil or the melaleuca oil will have some, uh, may, may give you some symptomatic relief, some superficial symptomatic relief. But as long as you have the digestive slash immune problem, you're probably going to go back to, uh, you're probably uh, going to end up with the same skin care issue later on down the road. You're not going to create any permanent changes. Willard water, likewise. Willard water is kind of interesting stuff. Uh, a, guy named, um, a guy named Willard, Dr. Willard, actually created this stuff, a special water which has an electrical property, has a sort of magnetic field that's associated with, with the water molecules. And, and a lot of folks think Willard water and this, this electrically charged water uh, can have a, a, a beneficial effect when you drink it, although I've never really heard anything about using Willard water topically. It, drinking Willard water, at least according to some research, can increase your body's ability to absorb nutrients, absorb vitamins, and absorb minerals because it can create a change in the electrical electrical energy of cells and improve the ability of intestinal cells to absorb nutrients. So drinking Willard water may be beneficial. I can't say I've seen anything officially or I've, that I've even seen any research that talks about uh, the beneficial effects of using Willard water, but it might be something that you want to think about topically, though you're not going to get too much benefit from that. So digestive system health, uh, and Mighty 90 always helps too if you want to use the Mighty 90. Selenium has some antimicrobial properties, especially uh, vitamin C has antimicrobial properties, as does zinc, 50 milligrams a day on the zinc, 200 to 400 micrograms a day on your ultimate selenium, and then 1,000 to 2,000, even up to 5,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C. I'm sorry, you were asking me something? Yeah, um, check out check out the Willard water because um, they they claim that they um, give the Willard water or sell the Willard water to burn units. Yeah, and they notice improved healing when people drink the water or when they use it topically. Topically. So they put the Willard water on topically, and they get beneficial effects for burns. They are saying that they sell it to burn units. That's what Do, they is, said. Is there any? Do they say there's any research on that, or they're just selling it you to burn? You know something they. They did not say that, but um, that's what they said. I, you know, I would be a little skeptical, although the people who do the Willard water, you know, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on them. I'd just be a little bit skeptical about it. I'd want to see some research on it. It's certainly not going to hurt, but I don't know necessarily that you're going to notice too much benefits topically, although I can't say either way. I'd like to see some literature on it, and I've been looking into Willard water now for many years, and I've yet to see any literature on it for topical use, although there is some nice literature for animal use internally, uh, giving it to animals, but I haven't seen anything for burn victims, although I, I may be wrong on that. If anybody out there knows about Willard water for burn victims used topically or has any research, I'd love to see it. Ben at KSCO.com is my email. Does that help Thank you? Thank you so much. God Thank bless you, Tonya. Good luck with everything. God bless you. All right. Take care. That's the most important thing I could tell you guys when it comes to skin health issues. If I had to say one thing, I would tell you to focus on the health of the, of the digestive system. Does that come as a surprise? Probably not if you heard this program. The digestive system is the fundamental system in the body. And yes, we have a triangle of disease. We've got the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex, but it all starts off with digestive health. The health of the so-called digestive tract and the liver and the, and the stomach and the pancreas and the gallbladder, all of these are where health begins. And I don't care if you're talking heart health. I don't care if you're talking uh, mental health. I don't care if you're talking skin health. It all begins with the health of the digestive system. All right, got a ton, I mean a ton of emails this morning. Uh, Doc was on uh, George Nori, and I got all kinds of emails. I want to, you know, I wish I could answer everybody's email, uh, but it would just take me hours and hours and hours to respond uh, by writing. Uh, but uh, just pick a couple of these emails here because we don't have any calls. So uh, I'm going to just pick a couple emails from uh, Eric. I, I'm a truck driver. I work 12 to 14 hours a day. Eric says every day he gains lots of weight because he doesn't have time to exercise and work it off. Well, that's not true, Eric. First of all, exercise is very overrated when it comes to losing weight. Yes, I said 
exercise is very overrated when it comes to losing weight. Is exercise important? Yes, it's important. I'm not telling you exercise is not important. It's incredibly important. The body responds to the stress that we call exercise by getting bigger and stronger and better. Every part of the body. The brain gets better when we exercise the brain. The skin gets better when we exercise the skin. And certainly the muscles and the bone get better when we exercise the muscles and the bone. The heart gets stronger. The lungs get stronger. The lung muscles get stronger. Everything gets better when we exercise. But as far as losing weight goes, goes, you really aren't going to lose a lot of weight unless you're a marathon runner, unless you're an intense exerciser. Just doing your regular 10, 15, 20 minutes a day of exercise, which is all you really need to build muscle and to strengthen bone, is not necessarily what you need to do to act to lose weight. So sorry, Eric, about that. But what you can do to lose weight is change the way you eat and get yourself on a good nutritional supplement program. Obviously, carbohydrates and sugar need to be avoided like the plague, especially ref refined carbohydrates, I should say, and refined sugar. You still need your vegetable carbohydrates, but processed foods, flours, anything that comes in a box is going to have a, 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 a it's going to make it much more difficult for you to lose weight, and it's going to have a weight gaining effect. Making sure you're getting enough of your micronutrients, your trace nutrients. That's also important. Your B vitamins, your trace minerals, uh, your, uh, your regular minerals, your macro minerals, and your micro minerals. All of your mighty 90 essential nutrients. When you don't have your mighty 90 essential nutrients, you end up snacking. And you especially end up snacking on high energy foods. And if, it's, if you're a truck driver, it's going to be very easy to do that. Every single truck stop you go into is going to be a, a source of these high-calorie, high-energy foods, and that's going to make it difficult for you to lose weight also. So number one, get yourself on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, especially the B vitamins and your electrical nutrients. And number two, and this is really, really important when it comes to weight loss, when you're under stress, and I'm talking mental stress as well as physical stress, when we're under mental stress and when we're under physical stress, the body will not want to lose weight because to the body, stresses represent famine. And so under conditions of stress, the body will protect us from a famine by keeping the weight on. Now, it's all related to the thyroid and the adrenal glands if you want to pick organs, but if you just want to lose weight and you can't, and you can't do it, rest assured the body perceives that its life is being threatened. There's some kind of stress, some kind of survival stress on the body. Now, sugar represents a major survival stress, especially high amounts of sugar, refined sugar I'm talking about, but psychological stress can do it and certainly the stress from any kind of chronic long-term degenerative disease problem. So by getting yourself on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, by doing a food diary and eliminating problems, food and by eliminating or reducing your intake of fast burning refined carbohydrates and sugars and deep breathing slow deep breathing can be wonderfully beneficial for reducing the stress load on the body and ultimately losing weight you'll find that you'll be able to drop the pounds Number one, get yourself on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. If you can't lose weight, this is. Get yourself on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Number two, eliminate any problem foods. Do a food diary and then support digestive health with the uh, Biolumin Nightly Essence and the Ultimate Enzymes and a little apple cider vinegar after all your meals. Number three, stay off of the fast-burning sugars. If you need more protein and coconut oil, do that because that's a great way to wean yourself off of the fast-burning sugars. And then make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques and do anything you can do to relax the body and activate the so-called parasympathetic nervous system, the weight will drop off because the body doesn't really want to hold on weight. It's doing it because it has to do it or it feels like it has no other option. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. We'll be back at you.